In today's video, we're taking a look at my top 10 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What's up guys, we're back with another top 10 rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card video. We've done this several times over the last few years. Last time I did it was early 2023, so it's been about a year. There's been a lot of changes in the Yu-Gi-Oh market since then. Back in 2023, everything was down. I think it's down even more since then. So we're gonna look and see what I still have from those previous top 10s and top 25s, you know, what the prices are looking at right now, and how rare are these cards still? We're gonna take a look at all the pop reports and everything. But before we get into it, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away this original print, Red Eyes Black Dragon. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, let me know down below, your favorite card in the top 10 and your rarest and most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card. Or maybe it could be a different card. It could be Pokemon, whatever it is. All right, before we crack the top 10, I actually kind of made this like a top 16 because I have six honorable mentions of nice cards. We've done tw top 25 before. I cut this down to top 10, but then I had a few that I wanted to show. So we're going to show those as well. So our first one is the PSA 10 Summon Skull. This is a pop 139. So that means there's 139 Gem Mint 10 first edition Summon Skulls from Metal Raiders. And that means it has to be that specific version. It's not going to be like the Euro version or anything like that. The first edition, North American Summon Skull from Metal Raiders. There's 139 of them. This one recently sold for $1,417. This is all like eBay stuff. That is much cheaper than it used to be. Obviously, it was up to almost a $5,000 card at one point. I did grade this one myself. I previously had another one I traded for, but when I graded this one, I sold that other one to TCA Gaming, actually. So uh, this is the one I have now because I graded it myself. I actually pulled this one, so you get a little bit more of a connection with it than the previous one that I traded for. I just love showing this card because it's a beautiful, awesome looking card. $1,400 is still nothing to like you know, snuff your nose out. it's still pretty nice the next card is the only psa 9 in this video and that is a blue eye shining dragon so it didn't make the top 10 because if it was a 10 it probably would have but being a psa 9 makes it a lot cheaper but the raw card is still really expensive with the blue eye shining dragon the original print of the blue eye shining dragon if you're watching this you're not a normal viewer of the channel uh is from the movie so you might think oh i had that one the movie is a different print than this the movie was widely distributed because obviously you just went to the movie and got it this is a reprint of the car but it was in secret rare it was really hard to pull from retro pack too so it's actually much more valuable than that movie version the nine is a pop 61 i think the the 10 is only a pop 30, so it's pretty hard to get a PSA 10 of this card. Unfortunately, I didn't get a PSA 10, but this 9 still sold for, not this specific one, but a 9 sold for $1,600 as a PSA 9, which is, and in this market, absolutely absurd, and that was in like December, so it hasn't been that long. Then speaking of Retro Pack 2, we have another one that we did pull, and we did get lucky enough to get the 10 on the second try, because they got the 9 the first time. Harpy's Pet Dragon, I pulled this one in an amazing moment, and if you guys remember that, massive video where we pulled this this harpy's pet dragon was a, a, an amazing pull during that i think it was the 200k special uh and then we were able to grade a psa 10. this one has no sales but i had to guesstimate so like there's a psa 9 sale for 475 so that should put a psa 10 around 1500 to 2000 somewhere in there and since it is uh only a pop 10 there's not many of these i mean a pretty rare psa 10 actually uh, I'm guessing the price is pretty high for someone if they actually want it. So maybe it could even be in the top 10, but it's hard to really know for sure, unless there's an actual sale. All right, next honorable mention is one we have to show, the Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. Everybody loves Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. I pulled this one back in 2019, I think. I think it was 2019. It was a uh, $300 card at the time. Graded it, PSA 10. It might have only been, a, wait, I think it was a $300 10. I graded it and got a PSA 10. It was then worth $300. Like before grading goes not 300 bucks. So crazy times back then, even now with like the lower prices, which right now this one has sold for a $1,825 for a PSA 10. It is also a pop 214. So there are quite a few blue eyes tune dragons out there because magic ruler is not extremely rare compared to some of the other ones, though it is still a very popular set. This is still much, much more expensive than it was back in 2018, 19, but not as expensive as it was during the boom. It was like $4,000. So very amazing card. Had to show it because it's just blue eyes tune. It's awesome. Couple more uh, honorable mentions. We have the Dark Paladin first edition from Magician's Force. This is technically the error artwork because it was not supposed to be in Magician's Force. It was supposed to be the uh, the, the standing up version. We can show it on the screen. Uh, that there also was a first ed version, but you had to send this copy into Konami. They would send you back the correct copy, but this was in all like the boxes and everything. So kind of a major error when you swap all the cards for the wrong card, but. 
Still an amazing looking card, even though it wasn't intended, and that kind of makes it cooler. A PSA 10 of this card recently sold for $2,000 and is also a pop 102. So 102 is kind of a lot, but also not really. Like when you think about it, 102 total copies is not that crazy. It's more than some of the cards you'll see, but it's also significantly less than some of the others. And our final honorable mention, the Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning. This is a card that I always feel like is too cheap for how hard it is getting Invasion of Chaos. And uh, the pop is not crazy. This is a pop 58, which is pretty low for a core set. Usually it's like in the hundreds at least. So pop 58 is pretty amazing. And there hasn't been a sale since like mid 2023. That was $2,000. There's one listed for $2,950 right now. So it's probably worth, you know, $1,800, maybe $2,000, something like that. But an amazing looking card either way. This is one I got in a trade. I did not pull it. One of the few here, actually. I mean, I guess these two are the two I haven't pulled, but uh, wow, wow, we've pulled a lot of nice cards over the years. We might need to do a compilation of our best pulls that because we have we do those by year. We haven't really done them of the whole channel in a long time. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. All right, we're finally on to the top 10. We have the elements of a hero flame wingman, one that I also pulled, got a nine, regraded it a 10 like two years later, got this out of a booster box of the Lost Millennium hobby box, Jim Mint 10. This is a pop 38, which sounds extremely low but you have to factor in that PSA did not differentiate ultimate rares and ultra rares for a long time. They only started doing it maybe two, three years ago. It was 2020 or 2021, maybe even 2022. I don't remember. It's been a long time. So the 38 is since then, there's been 38 graded in ultimate rare, but before that it would be in the ultra rare pop. So if you see the ultra rare pop, a lot of those are ultimate rares from before that. So it's going to be a lot higher than 38, uh, though that does make it look really nice with the 38. It had a sale for like 3.5K not that long ago, but there's one available right now on eBay for 2750 basically. So I valued this at $2,500, which is still pretty expensive expensive for a TLM ultimate rare because they're not like that crazy hard to find but PSA 10 you really don't know the pop so maybe they are hard to grade at number nine we have a TP ultra royal decree so TP ultras if you don't know tournament pack had uh, three cards per pack but the ultra rares were one in 108 to pull from these packs so what you would get is you'd go to your local you get a couple packs for playing in the tournament the total boxes were only 20 packs so you'd have to have like six or 5.4 boxes worth to actually pull one on average. So super, super rare. And then those, you know, a couple with the fact those are, you can't really buy them because they're for tournament packs. And then even then they were super rare because everybody was opening them in their tournaments. Nobody's really selling them. So they're super hard to come by. The pops of these cards are really low. This has actually gone up quite a bit since I bought this. When I bought this, it was a pop six. I bought this for 600 bucks. It's now a pop 12. So it's doubled since then. And the price has gone way up. I was once offered like four or maybe even 5K for this card. And I said no, which, you know, in retrospect, you should probably have taken it because it's a lot of money. But at the same time, I don't want to sell my TP Ultras. There is one available for 3000 on eBay now because I guess there's been a few graded since then. So I have it valued at about 2.5K, uh, which is, you know, a lot less than 5K that I got offered. So if I was dumb for not accepting that, make sure to let me know. At number eight, we have another IOC card, the Invasion of Chaos, Chaos Emperor Dragon. This is another one that I did not pull. Uh, same with the Royal Decree, really. This card is a pop 71, so it's a little bit higher than Black Luster Soldier, but still under 100 these days is still pretty impressive. We went through a Yu-Gi-Oh boom. People are grading everything. And to survive at under 100 still is pretty amazing. There's a PSA 10 listed on eBay right now for 5,000. That was pretty much all the info I could find. There hasn't been any sales since like 2022 on eBay, or at least that are listed. So I have this around 2.5 to 3K. It could be more, honestly. It's just really hard to know. It's a really amazing card. You know, it's a secret, so you're gonna get it one every two or three boxes, something like that. But I mean, who's opening Invasion of Chaos? A couple people have done it recently, me being one of them. I didn't get one, so they're not that easy to get. Then they're not that easy to grade because there's only 71 ever. Pretty amazing card. I mean, classic, iconic, playable just good stuff so that one's a pretty solid one it could be even higher up the list maybe if there's a sale soon we're back to the tp ultras we have the magical arm shield which is very similar to the royal decree this is tp8 so it's a couple tournament packs later so maybe i think that was like 2007 maybe something like that not totally sure on that when the tp no that, that would be champion pack had to be like 2005 so something like 2005 magical arm shield this one i bought at a psa or not a psa a pop six as well i think now it's at pop eight so it's gone up only two in like the last three or four years so this is still i mean under 10 copies of this graded psa 10 is pretty insane as I said before, one in 108, super hard to pull. Then you got to actually grade it. You got to actually find all these. And this is one that you just don't see very often. A PSA 9 sold for 350. So it's not like the most desirable card because, you know, magical arm shield, whatever. Not that crazy. Not like blue eyes or something. But when you're trying to get that PSA 10 set, 
so hard to come by. I was also offered like 4,000 for this one, didn't accept it. I still let's make this one around like 3,000, could even be 4,000, I'm not totally sure. I didn't see one listed or anything like with the Royal Decree, but 4,000 is a lot in this market these days. But I did buy this for about 500 to 600 bucks back in the day. I think it was around the same price as the Royal Decree. So still happy with that. We're still doing okay there. At number six, we have one of my favorite cards, the Cyber Dark Dragon Ultimate Rare PSA 10. Another card, this is the third card I've shown you that was a PSA 9 we regraded to PSA 10. All the cards that I have regraded so far though, I think are really solid condition, deserve the 10. But then you gotta factor in like, oh, it could have been a nine, it would be way cheaper. So just keep that in mind. But just value of PSA 10, we're just kind of going with that. The Cyber Dark Dragon Ultimate Rare is a really awesome one. There's not a lot of sales for this card. PSA 9, I think there was a $475 sale, something like that. You never see PSA 10s of this card. The pop is 17, but as I mentioned, the Ultimate Ultra Split wasn't until recently. So it's probably a lot more than 17, but maybe not a lot more because I really never see this card. There's one listed at 5K, but because of the nines, like 500, I'm guessing it's not getting up to 5K. It's usually not 10X for a PSA 10. So I have an estimated at three to 3.5K. It's kind of where I've had it for a long time. And I haven't seen any reason to change that. And it's just kind of, it's kind of a weird one. You don't really see a lot of them. Kind of the case with a lot of these rare and expensive cards is when there's not many for sale, it's hard to really price them. On to the top five, we have Genzo First Edition from Pharaoh Servant. This is an amazing one. This one was up to absurd prices, like, I mean, like 10, 12,000 at one point. This card is a Pop 92. I remember it being in the 50s. So it's a lot have been graded since then. Not the absolute hardest card to grade, but though it is not the easiest. I mean, it's still under 100 and there's a lot of Genzos out there. So it's done pretty well, you know, being fairly rare. There's been a recent sale for 3,500. So that made this pretty easy. There's also one listed for 3,600. So I feel pretty good at it being about 3,500, something like that. Secret rare. I did pull this one back in the day. One of my favorite pulls of all time. Uh, back when I, my audio was horrible, my video was horrible. It was good times though. And that one did get a 10 on the first try. At number four, we have one I recently traded for. I traded a Genzo actually. I had another Genzo I graded and I traded it with a friend of mine, Gezi TCG, for this Exodia, the Forbidden One. This is a glossy first edition Exodia head. So it's not wavy. Wavy and glossy, there's a difference on the card stock. Uh, wavy usually a little bit more expensive. This is a glossy version. So Gem Mint 10, first edition. The pop for Exodia, I was actually pretty intrigued to see it's at 98. It's actually not at 100. So with, you know, LLB first, everybody wants to grade everything, even if it's like a PSA 4. So you would think there'd be a lot of these, but not that many, actually. A 98, this is such a beautiful card. Iconic Yu-Gi-Oh card. One of my favorite that I own. Unfortunately, I didn't pull this one. I have pulled one before. It had a Nick in it. Rhyme Style and I pulled it together. Fortunately, I didn't grade that one, but I was able to acquire this one in a trade. And Exodia Head has sold recently. It was a glossy as well, so pretty good comp for $4,119.69. So a little meme there, but pretty expensive card. I think I traded it at a value of 5,000, so it's gone down a little bit since then. But one of my favorite cards, especially one that I have not pulled. I want to get that full set at some point. I have two pieces, three to go. Top three, we get to another one of my absolute favorite cards. This is one that I didn't pull. I bought, but I did grade it myself. The SM51 Spell of Mask Ultimate Rare Blue Eyes. So this is a pretty unique card in that it is a Japanese card. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but the background color actually factors in how rare the card is. Sometimes if it's more purple, I think the purple is less rare. The blue is more rare. That's what I heard. It's a Japanese card. I don't know them as well as I know English cards but it's beautiful nonetheless. I mean, just check it out. It looks absolutely amazing. Now the pop for this one might shock you. You might think, wow, that seems like a rare card, huh? There's probably not many of them. The pop for this is 444. So there are a bunch of these out there and they might not all be the blue background, the purple background, but they are, you know, Dispel a Mask Ultramar Blue Eyes. So they are out there and it's kind of surprising how expensive they are. There is there is some post where some guy posted where he had like 200 of them. So one guy has like half the pop. So keep that in mind. The rest of us <laughs> plebeians only have 200 of them. So it makes it more normal. So if that guy ever starts selling, the price is probably going to crash down on this card. But I have personally been offered like 4,200. There's also been a sale at around that it was $4,120. I think that's what it was based on. So there is some uh, some sales, some interest, stuff like that. But I personally like this card so much, I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. I didn't pull it. Usually if I didn't pull it, sometimes I might sell it. But this one is, it's just pretty amazing. I, I got to hang on to it. So that's my top three card right now. But yeah, if that guy goes crazy with his 200 copies in Japan or wherever he is, that might be worth, you know, 2000 soon. All right, two cards left. We have one of the most iconic cards from the channel. We've shown it many, many times. The Morphing Jar TP2 PSA 10. This is one that did not get regraded a 9 to a 10, but honestly, this is one of my luckiest grades ever. So the story with this card, first of all, it's a pop 33, 
which at, when I got it was a pop 21. Pop 33 is still pretty low. It's the highest of the TP ultras though, I believe. So the other ones like the magical arm shields at eight, world decrees at 12. I think mech chaser could be higher. Uh, not totally sure on that one. Needle worm obviously is lower. It's at like five or six. This one is 33. So while it is pretty low, it's still high for a TP card. Beautiful looking card. I acquired this in a trade back in 2018 or 19. I don't even remember what year it was. I traded some wavy first ed raw cards. They were like mod play to light play. And I got this card raw for $800 value. I then sent it into PSA because like, oh, this looks pretty good. And I was expecting like a nine, got a 10. So I got extremely lucky there uh, because if you guys can look, there is a little bit of edge wear on the top of this card. It, it's not like the worst ever, but you can see it. So that these days probably knocks it down to a nine. So it's not a super strong 10, but it's been in my collection for a long time. And that would knock the value if I was trying to sell it. I would have a little bit on there, uh, though. I didn't really factor that into this that much. I just kind of went off what I saw. So CGC 10, there's one listed for 5,250. CGC 10 is not going to hold up to a PSA 10 very often, even with their shenanigans of 9.5 to 10s and all this crazy stuff. They're usually still a little bit less, kind of like BGS 9.5. So that's kind of what a CGS CGC 10 is from what I've seen. There was also a nine sold for 2K in like 2023. So it's been a while since then. So I'm just estimating on this one at 5.5 to 6K. I think it's still going down. It was at 15K at the peak. So, I mean, if I was going to sell, I should have sold then, but I just don't really want to. It just has so much uh, nostalgic value for me acquiring it. It was a great moment. So I have this at my number two card, about 5,500 to 6K. Pretty expensive. If I did sell it, it'd probably go down because of that edge wear right there but probably not planning on doing that. If you guys have enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you want to see more top 10s, you want to see some top 10 moments, you want to see some openings and anything like that, maybe something else, let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe. All right, my number one card, it has changed up because we once had Cyber and Dragon, which I sold recently to help me buy a car. I haven't actually bought a car yet, but maybe we'll get there at some point. My Black Rose Dragon I once sold. I think I paid off taxes or something with that, which is a sad way for the Black Rose to go. But if you think about it, it saved me a lot of money. So here we are with our current number one, another card that I was not expecting to get a PSA 9. Oh, wait, I said earlier, those are only PSA 9. There's two PSA 9s. Here's the other one. We have the Blue Eyes White Dragon, a little bit faded, a little bit wavy first edition. When I graded this card, I got it out of a collection. I thought it was like a seven, maybe an eight. It has like a little dot on the surface right there. And I was like, there's no way that's going to like hold up very well. I was like, this thing's not going to do well. PSA nine, absolutely amazing moment. And then being slightly faded and then being wavy. I mean, that adds a lot of value to a blue eyes white dragon. And it's pretty cool that my most expensive cards now are blue eyes. I want to get a PSA 10 at some point. Tried to pull it for years. Never had the luck. This card is a pop 248 PSA 9, and there are 100 tens exactly 100 on the dot, which is pretty cool. There's one listed at 6.5K on eBay, but it doesn't look wavy to me. And it also doesn't have any fade to it. So I think this one would probably hold up over that one if it were to like sell. Uh, there's also no really other sales. Like there's been some random ones back like in 2022, tw early 2023. It's hard to really base those on there. This, the listed prices are crazy. So I have this estimated like 6.5, maybe 7K, probably 6.5K, could even be 6K. But with the fading, the wavy stuff like that, I think it's about a $6,000 card. So it's a pretty nice card overall, though at the peak, that card was 20K. You know, like the, the first ad PSA 10 was like 100 or whatever, 120. That thing's like was like 20 for a nine, maybe even more than that. So I didn't get that until later anyway, and I didn't actually pull that one. So hopefully one day I can pull one, get a PSA 10 and I can sell that one too. And I can replace it with that pulled one. So that's it for the top 10. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Maybe we'll do some other top 10s in the future. Shout out to Tone Info Show, Puffin Zudum, Ernesto Deanna, America Deutster, Another Toy Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F., Thomas McLean, Changalang, and Adelso Garcia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.